Hello everybody and welcome to a bonus video from MinMax. My name is Ben Hansen and MinMax is a place about games, friends, and getting better. I'm not alone, however. I am joined by somebody who likes to go by the name DeMille. Hello! Hey! <laughs> it's very nice to hear your voice. In the chance that you watching this on YouTube did not follow this saga on Twitch, um, I stream through all of Tomato Adventure which is an RPG on the Game Boy Advance from Alpha Dream, which is the studio that made the Mario & Luigi series. Uh, they, this was the game they made right before the Mario & Luigi series. It was a miracle because I jumped in there to play this old 2002 RPG, and then the second time I streamed it, we had DeMille here jump in and said, hey, I can help you with this game, I know a thing or two about it. I'm actually the fan that translated this game because it was never released in the West, so uh, thank you. I mean, you said during the stream that you've played through it, what, like 40, 50 times? Too many times to count. I hope it's on the lower end of that. You opened the, you know, doorway for everybody outside of Japan to finally play <clears throat> this really great Game Boy Advance RPG. So thank you for that, for all English speakers out there. On behalf of all English speakers, I, I thank you. Because it is such a good game. This was my first ever foray into fan translation. I never wanted to do fan translation, and I, I, I say this to anyone who like uh, thinks they want to do it. You don't want to do it. Trust <laughs> me. Trust me. You just don't want to do it. If you're interested in a quick rundown of the plot of Spano Adventure, there's King Abira, who is an evil dictator of Ketchup Kingdom, and he makes a new weapon, the Super Kara Cooker and also kidnaps your girlfriend. And so it's very Paper Mario in the way that you're going around battling the six super kids to eventually free your girlfriend from this prison. And along the way, you're seeing little vignettes of them trying to sap her of all her energy to power up this super weapon. The big thing with this game is the combat system and the fact that all of the attacks are basically WarioWare micro games and they're called gimmicks and you unlock more and more of them as you go along and so you just have to be really good at tapping, timing, like what are your favorite gimmicks in the game? I, I really like my kind of my Demille and Relic endgame build so my, my favorite one is uh, Relic's, uh, it's in Japanese it's called Kage Jiku which um, I localized out to Shadow Reel. And the cool thing with the gimmicks, it's kind of like a very Sakurai design sensibility style thing, is for each move that you can use, there is a slider, so you can adjust the difficulty, and if you ratchet it up all the way, then you do more damage, you replenish your basically limit break faster by using all these moves successfully, so every time you attack, there's a risk-reward element. The art in this game is absolutely bananas. Some of the enemies in this game are just mind-boggling. It's some of the weirdest pixel art I've ever seen, and the idea that Nintendo published this game. Oh god, you know the baby at uh, Mount Scream. <laughs> the freaking huge half machine, half raw, exposed like under your skin, organs and stuff. <laughs> Mount Scream in general is just some bizarre Lovecraftian nightmare, but then people pointed out in the chat like, oh, it's, it's a little bit Bowser's Inside Story. There's like flavors of just kind of working your way through human anatomy looking environments. So you can see the precursors for Alpha Dream here. Uh, they threw every single dart they had just at this game in general. Yes. And they didn't take any of them off the board. They were just like, well, we're going to do that and we're going to do that. We're just going to do them all. And it worked out really well, all things considered. Yeah, the crazy thing is it's called Tomato Adventure, so I thought it was going to be a lot of uh, vegetable themed jokes. You know, you think you kind of get the idea. And then outside of like that original town where it's like, okay, you're a dropper, you're banished to this town. And outside of the first hour or so, then it just jumps around to different themed worlds, like some twisted Disneyland. So first you go to like a toy world, uh, that's the dungeon there. Then you go to like a mayonnaise town. I guess the towns are always food themed, but then the dungeons themselves, there's a, a sunken ship that's all Christmas themed with like Christmas themed pirates and just weird enemies. Uh, the one that really blew my mind is there's Alcatraz, which is a prison, but also it's the inn but then it is also a prison that is jailhouse rock themed. So it's Alcatraz with recording studios inside of it where bands are trying to lay down the, the sickest rock riff they can. It's just bananas. Who, who comes up with some of this stuff? <laughs> but it, it, it's Alpha Dream. But it it's surprising to me because, um, you know, this is about Tomato Adventure, obviously, but their previous work was nothing like this. 
Yeah, so what, it was a card battling game called Kodo Battle? Yeah, Kodo Battle is a, it's a card-ish battling game where you put together a deck of kanji characters. So just Japanese mm. characters that have different meanings. And what you can do with those is based on what they mean. So, like, the one for fire will let you summon a fire elemental monster or cast fire magic, and, and things like that. Okay. But it's so straight forward, that game. You wouldn't know that the same people made it. It's just like, how did they go from that to Tomato Adventure? <laughs> but I'm thankful they did. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, I would imagine, comes from the director, right? Uh, Chihiro Fujioka, um, who worked on Super Mario RPG, Yep. But then also just worked on bizarre stuff like UFO, A Day in the Life. Um, so he seems to be an eccentric guy. And you can go check out his Twitter feed. It's the greatest Twitter feed of all time, where it's just him looking directly at the camera and uh, banging on some drums with the same smile and wave to start off every stream or every little Twitter video. It's incredible. Yeah, he has the comfiest Twitter account of all time. He is, he could be your grandpa. That's just <laughs> it. He is my Twitter grandpa. Like. <laughs> I, that's the kind of old man I hope to be when I'm an old man. He's just, he's perfect. He is a, he's a perfect man. There's no doubt about it. Um, but other environments in this game that are absolutely bizarre. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just like that sequence where there's kind of the, the moon balloon with the, the fake Beethoven. Uh, I know you have all this stuff just ingrained in your soul, but the, the dungeon that really blew my mind, not only because it's a colossal pain in the ass, um, but just thematically, it's, okay, it's an entire area about an art museum. So you already know it's going to get abstract and a little bit weird, but then you're going into the dream world for the dungeon within this art museum where you have to transition between different levels of REM sleep. It is one of the trippiest, weirdest segments of any game I've ever played. What is going on there? Oh my freaking god. <laughs> that... It, it comes... It really does come out of nowhere, and there's not really a good explanation for it. It's wild, and I, I told you kind of up front that it is a very straightforward, it always points you where you need to go. Right. It, it doesn't seem like it's pointing you where you need to go, but it always does. So it is, it, it's only like nasty if you really get lost. Like you never really did, and I kind of was aiming you towards what you need. I was doing Appreciate my best, that. like Nintendo, like the old phone counselors <laughs> Nintendo used to have or whatever, right. those guys. But God, yeah, that, that whole section, like, uh, if, you, if you're going to show a friend this game and be like, hey, I've got this cool game, you show them a picture of the, the REM and REM maze, and you're like, look at this. Like, this is a Game Boy Advance game. And they're going to be like, whoa, that's pretty neat. What is happening here? It what is, is happening here? It is so trippy. It is so bizarre. Um, since you know the game so well, what, uh, what stands out to you as, like, the funniest sequence in the game? Because there's a lot of funny stuff. You know, stuff that stands out to me, if I may cut you off, um, is just, like, I like that weird scene where they're falling in the beginning and then they ask for a slow motion uh, take to figure out what exactly happened. So it breaks the fourth wall in that vein a couple times, even characters talking about what music is playing for you at that current time and stuff like that. But what stands, you, stands out to you as like the silliest moment in the game? There's a lot. Yeah. I really, I really, really like the, uh, this, uh, this kind of low hanging fruit here. I like the, I like the pothead. I like his interactions. In, in Japanese, it's called the pot mania. I know that's like a that's a pretty questionable thing, but mania. Uh, someone who likes something a lot. Sure. Uh, well, you got well, that kind of meaning there. That works. But like his interactions, I, I I just really I like when he shows up again when you're like halfway through the cave or whatever, and he's like, "Show me your pot." <laughs> I, I get a real kick out of him. Yeah, I know you um, love the character that gives you some special gimmick moves towards the end. Oh my God, Kaizo. Yeah, he, he is probably my, my favorite just because of the, the freak outs he has. The best, the best, the best, the best. You know, that whole <laughs> thing where he's like spinning and jumping around. Like getting his stuff to be kind of perfect and tight. Uh, the timing on his lines and stuff. Uh, and it was important because he, he, he's kind of insane. It gets old after you've grabbed a couple of gimmicks from him. But like that first time, you're like, what is this guy? What's this guy? What the heck? Yeah, I, like I, I really recommend this game two people if you love Paper Mario, especially like the first couple of Paper Marios, obviously if you're a Mario and Luigi fan, like anybody who loves comedic Japanese RPGs, I feel like is a certain, certain niche within the gaming community. And like you would be doing yourself a disservice if you never checked out this game. Uh, there's ways to get it. The translation is, is, is solid. Thank you for all your work there. Uh, how long to beat said that it would take me 11 hours to get through. 
uh, it, it ended up taking me 19 hours to see that to see this thing through. So I don't know about that 11 hours thing. And the reason that I think it takes so long is because if you a first time we're playing this is gonna run into those those parts. And you know exactly which parts I'm talking about that are just like, oh my god, they're making me do this, like the snowboarding crap in the, uh, yes. in the balsamic dome. That's just, oh man, that's just not fun or fair. It is mind boggling uh, that they make you do that. So as much as like, I think this game starts out pretty smooth. Some of the dungeons later on get a little bit messy, but they're totally doable. For games from 2002, I think it's, it is on the easier side overall, except for that final boss. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh my god, the final boss. Make final sure you're boss ready. Is either easy or impossible. Yes. That's, that's yes. a good way to look at it. If you don't have enough to beat him and he is just taking you out, you're you, you gotta back off and regroup and rethink it. But <laughs> um yeah. yeah. Easy or impossible, no in-betweens. The game really, I think, does a great job of constant variety. I love any RPG that focuses on variety as well. In combat, obviously, with the different gimmicks, but then even outside of combat, uh, just having so many different weird one-offs for you to explore and for you to do. Um, also, just convenient things like the fact that you can save anywhere. I love the fact that the main character talks. I feel like just... Everything I like from this type of game, this game completely nailed. You know, again, just stupid jokes like when they're saying you need to tap A or they're going to delete all your save data. I love just weird, bizarre moves like that. And it's the type of thing that you normally don't see from a developer associated so closely with Nintendo. It's just a developer getting this freaking weird. But that's the beautiful world that Alpha Dream was in when this game came out. Right, I love the that kind of uh, there. It's almost like a rareware kind of humor. What they would do with like a banjo kazooie or something, but right. m more restrained and, and, and funnier. I think it, it ages a little bit better when you when you see those jokes again. Uh, I always liked uh, we're you know going back to kind of the funny, but this is another Alpha Dream tier thing. The way that Demille will just like face the camera with his like weird face, and he's just commenting on a situation, just right. talking to you. He's like, "What the heck is this?" <laughs> right. You no, know, right. he, he he feels you. He projects his feelings onto you, and vice versa. He knows what's up. <laughs> yeah. Um. I was looking around for just uh to see if. Alpha Dream ever commented on this game and the chance of them making a sequel, which they very much tease at the end of the game, uh, that the sequel is happening. Um, and the best I could find is uh, an old Game Informer interview from Kyle Hilliard, current person at MinMax, um, and he asked the producer why we've never seen Tomato Adventure in the West, and his answer there was, first of all, he laughs, and then he says, The reason why is the age group we were targeting was a bit too low and a bit too small. We also had some trouble with the battle system, and it wasn't received well at the time of release. Which is mind-boggling to me, because I was engaged in every attack in that RPG because of the battle system, which is something that you you can't say for many RPGs, that every attack I was on the edge of my seat trying to make sure I perfected. Maybe if they had refined it just a little bit more, it might have it might have made it. They might have they might have made it over here, but at the same time, it's a good thing that they 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 clearly learned a lot from this game. Yeah. Because when you when you jump from this to like Mario and Luigi. You can really tell that a Nintendo is kind of hovering over their shoulder and being like, "Hey, what you doing there?" And they they really help them tighten up the screws on all the good ideas that they brought to this game. It, it's a good stepping stone of the game. Like it, it's not perfect by any means, but it, it is so interesting to play. Yeah, so interesting to just even as just an observation, uh, uh, just seeing what they would. You know, they did. They learned this is how we got these later games. Yeah, I'd rather have a bold, uneven, freaky mm -hmm. RPG than, you know, the standard JRPG, which we all right. know, hey, the mist is making everybody dangerous outside of town. Like, this right. is a weird RPG, which I, I'm completely on board for. How, uh, how much attention did you get for releasing this? Like, it blew my mind that you said that you watching our stream was the first time you've ever seen anybody stream it. I tried not to be the center of attention on all of this. I, you could say that's kind of the way that I handle the whole project in general. When you put out a work like this, and you, I think you can appreciate this because you do, you know, production, video yeah. production, writing and stuff. Uh, it feels like you're just kind of burying it all to people when you put out a, something that you put a lot of love into, right? And uh, I just was like, I don't want to see it because I don't want to, I don't want to feel like that. I feel so exposed. You know, yeah, this was the the first time I like sat and watched a stream of anyone doing it. Um, I heard things through uh, the the hacker that I was working with to 
to push this project out uh, about different changes and what have you. But for the most part, I've, I've kind of like laid low and tried not to be, tried not to get attention from it, just because I, I want the work to stand on its own. Okay. You know, I don't want I don't want people to think, oh, hey, that's the guy who translated Tomato Adventure. I just want them to go, oh, I, this is Tomato Adventure. You know. Right, right. Very Miyazaki of you. He kind of has that approach as well for you know stuff like uh, Bloodborne. Like I want to be out in front talking about this thing. Right. It, it's it's good enough that it, it does stand on its own. I don't know. Being a name attached to it, uh, I just want to be the person who brought you know joy to whoever plays this if it puts a smile on your face that puts a smile on my face well hey demil thank you so much again for all your work thanks for jumping on the line to talk even more and um this is now the rest of your life is jumping on twitch and finding people who are playing tomato adventure and guiding them through uh to make sure they experience this great game i look forward to it thank you so much for enjoying it thank you for sharing it with uh, all these people who would never have seen it and uh Thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you. You can always uh, throw a subscribe our way if you enjoy this type of content. Otherwise, if you go to MinMax's main page on YouTube, you can find the unlisted full Let's Play of Tomato Adventure if you want to learn more. Or again, you can always follow us on Twitch at MinMax Show. All right, until next time, everybody. Uh, is there some famous closing or goodbye or anything in Tomato Adventure I'm we should use? I'm just going to say so long and have a good day. <laughs> If you are sick of snark, clickbait, and an avalanche of movie news, you can help support independent games media by subscribing to MinMax's YouTube channel here or checking out the benefits over on Patreon. It's a nice, clean handshake. You support us, and we won't make dumb, condescending stuff for you. Your support helps us continue our mission of focusing on games, friends, and getting better. Patreon.com slash MinMax with two N's. We'd appreciate it.